Josh the RV nerd covering Grand Designs. Could you ever imagine it? <laughs> um, if that's an indication as to how this one is getting going, you better get the grown machine ready because we might need her. This is the Imagine 2500 RL. We have these at uh, many of our different locations. Uh, today, I happen to be in Twin Falls, Idaho, visiting one of our stores, uh, taking a look through one of our displays here. Um, I've seen other manufacturers, I, I, I almost, I almost want to say attempt this layout. I don't think I've seen someone else really nail it this well. The very closest I've seen would definitely be the 25 RDS Cougar, which does it does a good job in its own right. They each kind of snipe each other in a couple little ways. I'm going to point out some of those comparisons. I'm going to point out things on this that where I think they just absolutely crush it. I'm also going to point out a couple things where I think um, maybe a little extra attention could be paid. And it's that fair kind of good, bad, ugly, and everything in between information you're going to get from us today. This thing is barely over 6,000 pounds. It is a fantastic fit for, I think, most half-ton pickups. Understand we always want to double-check the capacities of your specific half-ton, because that could vary. But this thing has a dynamite look, a big, open, expansive feel inside, good storage, um, and the bedroom arrangement on this is, I think, one of the best I've seen. And I've seen a lot of RVs. The way they nail this bedroom, uh, I have nearly no critique of it. This, the whole camper is really nailed very, very nicely. What I love about this is the consistency between Imagine, Reflection, Sal Dude, even Transcend the Stick and Tins. They, you can really see where they're related and where they really nail it on that consistency. Now, this is my first time going through an Imagine, so if I miss something, if I get something wrong, please point that out. And something I always ask, folks, is take a second to subscribe to our videos if you appreciate what we're doing here. But also, leave me comments as we go. Let me know what are your favorite things that you see, and what would you change given the opportunity? Buddy, I gotta tell you, I am excited. I am excited to get inside this thing. This, man. She, she, I'm going to call her Jenny because she's got the ways to move me over here. <laughs> I've seen layouts like this from a couple different manufacturers. Freedom Express had something like it for a while. Again, I don't know that I've ever seen someone nail it quite like this. The Cougar 25 RDS, again, is, I think, the, the best, most comparable. And I would love your input. I will leave a link to that, actually, if I remember. And if I forget, you, you tell me. In the video description where you can check that Cougar out. Um... The Cougar has a giant dinette in the back and the theater seating over here. So we have choices among Bishes. If you'd like those little micro variations, we have that stuff available. But otherwise, very similar. Although the look in this, woo, this has that, I'm going to say simulated Euro look. Um, but it's just very crisp, very clean, um, nice straight lines. Excellent fit and finish in here. No floor vents, although... Uh, somebody did happen to leave some popcorn on the floor. One of the good things, though, is that we clean the RVs before you take them home, and we do that at no additional charge. Now, I want to acknowledge something really sweet here, the window coverage. So this is over on the driver's side, where if you're at a park, you're looking at the neighbors. That's maybe not the best, but look at how you've got window coverage everywhere. Every window opens. Awesome airflow, amazing coverage. And then as we wrap our way around here over onto the door side of the RV, uh, whether you're in the theater seat or if you're sitting at the, the dinette like I am right now, you've got door side window coverage. Now, these aren't giant picture windows, but it's not nothing. It's pretty darn good. I think it's absolutely uh, better than bad. Now, the, uh, the TV up here, if you're looking at it versus the sofa, it looks a little bit like a neck crank, doesn't it? Thankfully, it does have that swing out pivot right there. So, the, you know, when you are sitting back here at the heat and massage, like, theater convertible love seat, it's like an extra large chair. Rockwood uses something very, very similar to this, where it has that fold-down center uh, console and armrest. One of the cool things about that is, like, let's say it's grandpa and grandma, and you've got one of the grandkids with you for the weekend. You can, you can have that amazing little cuddle situation going on where you fold the armrest up, you can put the grandbaby in between you, you can get a little blanket, you can get those snuggles, you know? Oh, that is, tell me that is just not the best thing. You know, like when you have a dog or a cat sitting on your lap, you're like, nope, I can't move. That's what it's like, I think, when you actually get that good cuddle time with your kids. Tell me that is just not the best experience. Uh, anyway, 
Um, I'm waxing poetically over here. Um, someone might ask, hide a bed? I gotta believe that you could put one back here if you could put a theater sofa. Um, you can download the uh, Compass Connect app, by the way, uh, which will allow you, which is basically LCI's one control, which will allow you to control a lot of the stuff that's on this panel straight from your phone. And if you uh, add a TPMS system that, the, that, that goes with this, that can also talk to the exact same app. So one app can do so many things, but you do just have switch buttons, which I think is very, very cool. Um, as long as we're over here, let's go ahead and just pop the kitchen open. Now, I, I mentioned it in a reflection tour I did previously. Um, there might be a new king of storage in town. Grand Design is amazing at just really knocking out every nook and cranny. But also, again, the fit and finish on the cabinetry. Everything is really squared up. There's not a whole lot of, like, little janky fit and finish. Uh, this is kind of cool. A uh, little adjustable pegboard base in the bottom of this where if, if you want, you could get that out of there, but you can kind of rearrange that. So depending on the size of things you have, you can really maximize your function of that space. That is smart. That is cool. Now, one thing I really do personally prefer a lot in an RV is a space for a wastebasket. This RV in the kitchen does not have a dedicated space specifically for that. Um, Mm, sorry, hold on. I'll come back to that. Just kind of occurred to me. I really like behind the sink. You have a nice backsplash. I would really kind of like something similar behind the stove. And again, that's just a personal preference. You know, uh, just, I don't know, just kind of throwing that out there. Counter, uh, anyway, I was saying wastebasket. <laughs> Squirrel! Saw something shiny. Um, I think you could put one under that countertop extension right there. And when you're at your destination, I don't see any reason why you need to fold that down. Now you might look at it and say, well, it's a little bit in the way of the bathroom door. Hang with me just a second. Um, and I, I think you'll see how it, it's okay. Over here, we've got one of those larger Furion 12 volt compressor fridges. Uh, that, that gives us, you know, just the most cold storage capacity available within this space. Another thing here is again, just doing it a little different. This dinette is legitness. And what you're gonna see is it has a lot of multi-functionality, which I think you're kind of seeing as a trend. So you got that free-floating elliptical base table. This could fold down to be a guest sleeper, by the way. And that's a pretty good sized dinette. I think you could probably sleep an adult there. Two would be pushing it, you know? Um, of course, there's plenty of open floor space and with no heat vents on the floor, it's not like you gotta worry about the kids dropping stuff down there overnight. Now let's acknowledge a couple things. First of all, awesome that they gave us doors for the storage at the base of the dinette someone may prefer drawers they just do doors you know it just is what it is um they are still doing a carpeted slide floor in the imagine series reflection however has gone carpetless but we're not done here because if you don't like you dinettes if you're like uh, -uh i want a two bench dinette there you go the rear bench don't gotta be there <laughs> totally free floating it's just a storage trunk you don't even have to leave it there you just take it out i will tell you though recommendation if you don't like it don't throw it away or get rid of it but like i was saying the fit and finish in here totally on point and i think this is an amazing example of that where you have a meeting of three things and a visual design overlap so you've got part one two three this has to be mounted right to line up with that which has to be mounted right to line up with that. And they nailed it, you know. By the way, this, <laughs> it's kind of funny. This almost looks like a linen. It's not though. It's just a, a nicely accented colored wood, but it just really, I think helps open everything up. Not to mention the whole color package in here is kind of light and creamy, very comfortable. The vaulted ceiling also helps open things up in here uh, quite a bit as well. Now I said, I don't think you need to fold that uh, countertop thing down. You might've noticed that blue light kick on just now. I accidentally bumped the, uh, the accent light under the sofa with when uh, I kind of half sat on it. But because this is an extra wide pass-through, you still have a normal door width as you come in here into the bathroom space. If uh, in the bathroom, I have a couple personal critiques. It's a little dark over here. 
Um, I have noticed occasionally a couple grand designs will, it feels a little dim in certain areas, although uh, that is about as fluffy, friendly seating as anything's ever going to get around a toilet, and I, I, I'm still disappointed that we have the need to put these, don't use the toilet signs on here. The other critique that I personally have here is I'm not personally a fan of open cabinetry. I prefer doors on that linen cabinet space over there. That's just a personal thing. Look at this smart little attention detail though. This big sliding pocket door that closes that off to the living room. Little towel rod on the back of that. So the door is acting like a wall in a sense. It's a little thing, but it's a nice thing. These do have a simpler fan system, but that's an easy, easy upgrade. Um, if the only thing stopping you from calling us, if, if like, if uh, you're like, listen, I like everything on RV except that fan, call us guys. We're not, we're going to work with you. It's, it's a fan. You know what I mean? It's not that big a deal. This is all nice and wide open. Uh, one of the benefits of this, uh, middle bathroom here walk through like this is that it keeps the RV shorter and lighter, which also means much less expensive. The downside is that if someone's using the bathroom, you have to go outside and then go around the RV to access your bedroom but thankfully you have a door to do that now some folks don't like doors in their bedroom but something to keep in mind that door has a deadbolt uh if you don't like a direct entry bedroom door which personally i don't understand i hear that feedback all the time i hate a door in the bedroom i i personally don't get it but that's fine i'm not the one buying it you are i might buy a different trailer that's okay that's why i like to point out things that are preferential or talk about this but if you don't like that that's a door, just deadbolt it all the time, because the only person getting through that thing is going to be a grizzly. Of course, at that point, it's a good thing the bathroom's right next door, because uh, you're going to have need of it. Now, the uh, the whole bedroom, all right, again, they went with maximized storage. And there's just some... Bedrooms are an area that campers... Designers just often neglect, you know? I've seen some RVs where it's like they spent all the money in the living room. Then when you get in the bedroom, everything sucks. That's not the case here. So first of all, 60 by 80, true queen bed. Awesome. Now, the trick is, uh, because of the way that the, the closets and cabinets are so built in, it doesn't really give you the option of a king unless you go seriously modifying stuff. And it looks so good. I would feel bad doing that. Um, now, I said boxed in. Thankfully, with the little headboard pocket over here, I don't think you're going to feel boxed in. And if you notice, there's household and USB outlets on both sides. Now, CPAP users, can you give me an idea? That is about a foot wide and 10 inches tall. Is that big enough for your machines? Would that be a CPAP cabinet? At the same time, it'd be an awesome little phone uh, charge kind of station. Another thing here, you've got the white and blue like dual element reading lights, but that is not just like a how can I say this? It's not a wall board. Let me get up here. Let me close. Like this is one of the things you gotta, you gotta do the hand feel test. It's actually a little padded, almost like drop curtain arrangement. It's different, but it's also kind of cool. And this whole like double big dresser drawers, still maintaining a good closet, full storage overhead in the cabinet. And you might notice when you, see, it's hard to show you on camera, but when you see this in person, uh, those overhead cabinets are bigger than in most RVs. So the question I kind of had is, is that thing going to be a headbanger? Hang with me just a second. We're going to check that out. Uh, but first, under the bed here, nice, easy lift, separate storage trunk, completely um, separate from whatever's going on in the pass-through, so you don't have like a bleed-through of odors. And that's just a little sliding storage trunk, basically, a little eh, kind of drawer, if you will. You could use that like a, a an additional drawer. You could also just take it out if you wanted to. So, like I said, <sighs> am I going to hit my head on this? And understand, when I do these headbanger tests, I don't check first. I just full send it. And, uh... <laughs> Boy, is this a flattering camera angle. Blah. Anyway, <laughs> good news is this is far enough away. Like, I can't touch it. I don't think I'm going to have a problem. So let's send it. Engage the abdominals. Wow. 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 Yeah. I'm not even close. This works for me. So the question then becomes... What about the road mode travel accessibility? And I thought I'd actually do this in real time so you could see it. You need to remember, 
fold that uh, countertop extension down when you're closing the slide. But what you're going to find here uh, is that the, the second door may be extremely beneficial for some people, with, d depending on your preferences, because that slide's gonna pretty much totally pinch the camper off. Now, the question I kind of had, because the kitchen access is obvious, but this refrigerator. Now, does the fridge open all the way? No. Can I get in here enough? Yeah, I can get in here enough. You know, the freezer remains accessible. What it means though, is that if you want to access anything in the uh, front of the RV, what you're going to have to do, take a little jaunt outside and you're going to have to take a trip in through the second door, the one that we talked about deadbolting. Now, if you do that, bathroom, bedroom, or as I so eloquently like to phrase it, nap and crap accessibility becomes a non-issue. First of all, I feel like we need the final countdown. This has a look about it. And what's really interesting to me is Imagine was able to successfully accomplish something so many manufacturers wish they could. And that is having maybe a slightly more blunt nose on the front, but it doesn't look, it doesn't feel, it doesn't read like that. But that's part of the magic that makes the bedroom so good on this one. Those accent lights looking fine up front. That is a three quarter nose cap. Down below you see a, a, a great diamond plate, but this is a cool detail that still photos I don't think really do justice. They cover, say the bottom foot of their nose caps with uh, like almost like a spray on bed liner. So the whole thing is acting like a stone guard uh, effectively, kind of cool. Now, unfortunately I'm parked next to a muck puddle, but that's not gonna stop us from getting here into this just gigantic pass through. Look at the size of this thing. It's also a good area for you to get to see some of the, uh, the extra, like the aluminum framework that they're doing under that bed. Now, um, something we weren't able to see from the, the driver or the door side over there was that power outlet up there in case you wanted to, uh, you know, plug something in outside. You've got motion lighting on both sides. The switch next to that light is for a nose cap, by the way. Uh, the uh, TPMS module basically gets clicked in place right here. And like pretty much everything these folks make, you've got this, it's simple but it's effective little, just kind of centralized docking center, but it also puts things like that battery disconnect where neighbor kids walking around can't mess with the thing. I can't tell, I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen more than once. Black tank flush over here. Um, take a little, you know, we'll come back to the skirt in just a minute. We'll get down there below the belly, uh, look at the underbelly enclosure for now, cruise our way around here. Uh, a question I think some folks may have is, I don't see, the prep points for slide awnings. Well, the answer to that is, yeah. Yeah, we totally can. That's that's not a hard thing. People, Some people don't realize, maybe if you're new to the RV industry, those little um, awning, slide awning mount brackets that you see on some things, like there, there's a lot of those on say Forest Rivers, Jayco, stuff like that. Um, people have been adding slide awnings to RVs for years. It doesn't have to specifically have those prep points. There's structures that we mount into. And what we do basically, if we have questions, is we give the VIN number to say like Grand Design, we get a wall schematic so that we know what we're screwing into so that we're not just punching holes through your camper. People don't tend to appreciate that. Ooh, another really big thing. They do this across all of the laminated Grand Design RVs. I don't think I've remembered to talk about this previously. Titan Seal. All right, so what is Titan Seal, if you've never heard of this? Well, something that a lot of people don't realize when it comes to RV production, like when I say seals, you're picturing the seals like up on the roof, the, the, the putty and stuff like that. Well, at the seams of RVs, like this rear corner, there's something like that called butyl tape. And butyl tape is fine, but over time it dries out and it rots away and it's no longer doing anything. So the outside seal becomes the only seal that's protecting the RV from water intrusion. A very cool thing Grand Design does on all of these laminated models is that any structural stress point, so like, um, you know, around the perimeter where the roof meets the sidewall, around the slide out corners and stuff like that, they use a material called Mylar. It's a Mylar tape. And the idea there is that stuff doesn't rot. Now, it does cost a little more and you can't see it. So it's hard to feel excited and understand what you're paying for with that. But the idea here is that God forbid, 
you have a seal on the roof that isn't quite doing its job like it's supposed to, you now, with a grand design, you have a second layer of defense that most RVs just simply lack. That is an amazing peace of mind thing that they put on these that I really like. Now, look at the awning on this thing, Batman. Oh my gosh, it is, I, I just realized it covers, it starts at the back and it goes all the way up past the front entry door. Holy cow. And these entry doors, cool thing on these is they are both a, uh, a friction hinge um, anti-slam door. Also, they have um, not just that, like if it was just a friction hinge door, that would be fine, you know? But they still put a little magnet on that to keep that sharp point away from you so you're not jabbing yourself. Again, TPMS uh, included with this, or pardon me, no, no, no. Uh, it's included on reflections. This is prep for TPMS on the uh, imagines. Goodyear endurance radials over here, 87 mile an hour rated. Um, you see the the power jacks on these. So just push of a button. On now, now there's two imagines. I want to clarify this, and I'm glad I have a couple right here. This is awesome. So there's the imagine, and then there's the XLS. XLS is like the Little Brother series. They, they don't necessarily always have the power jacks like you see here on the Big Brother Imagine series, effectively. Um, also, we're going to get up on that ladder in just a second, but I said I'd show you around down here. This has the same effective like insulation package as a reflection, as a solitude, or a momentum. We're enclosed under here. We are forced air heated. Um, they have uh, a, a radiant barrier layering going across the underbelly, up the nose cap, and across the roof. And then in the nose cap, they also stuffed that with like another layer of conventional insulation just to help keep the air gap out of there. Now, windshields look good on RVs, but with no windshield on the front, this is going to be much uh, better at keeping your bedroom cooler when you're parked in the sun. That's a big deal. Now, in today's world, most trailers, even most lightweight trailers, still have a walkable roof. Uh, I've been told by other manufacturers, eh, those imagines don't have a walkable roof. And I prefer to check things for myself. I like to get the answer straight from the source. And unless I manage to do some kind of uh, David Blaine flotation device maneuver just now, this has a pretty walkable roof, and uh, according to me. Now, um, the uh, we're, we got 3 8 roof decking, and we've got always uh, about 16 inch on center roof studs, that's perfectly walkable. You know, that's that's normal roof construction for most things. Uh, the, the white roof membrane definitely helps keep some of that sunshine out of there, but you see that solar panel up there. Of course, I'm in reverse view mode uh, on my camera right here. Um, that is a carry the 165 watt panel, had to access the memory there. UncleJosh.exe has stopped working for a second. Um, and the idea here is that this by itself is not like a boondock camper, but it could potentially be. It's an, uh, you know, you could add inverters for running outlets. It has a 50 amp MPPT controller, a very good charge controller, by the way, so that if you wanted to go nuts expanding that solar package, you definitely could. And then depending on the fridge that you choose, you could be even more uh, off-grid friendly, as it were. So once again, let me know your thoughts here. Uh, I I've shown you where I think it soars and where it maybe falls short a little bit, but every single RV, they all have that one awesome special quality that they do that maybe nothing else does. They've all got those amazing things. You know, what are those standout features for you? Um, and uh, just any extra feedback you can give me on this, if there's something I missed, something, whatever, you get the idea, let me know. I'm so excited to finally really be able to bring you the expanded coverage that I promised you a couple months ago. It's all finally coming together, guys. It's going to be a great year. If this is your first time joining us, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Mm -hmm.